Hello, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. My name is uh, Nikolai Gotti. I work at, uh, at JetBrains, uh, technical lead of uh, Kotlin Native uh, uh, team. And uh, I want to give a talk which, uh, which covers uh, Kotlin Native concurrency model, uh, describing both uh, why we came up with, uh, with this particular concurrency model, uh, what are the instruments available for using uh, uh, for using this concurrency model in Kotlin Native, and uh, how to solve for certain practical, typical pro problems of uh, concurrent programming with uh, uh, Kotlin Native uh, concurrency model. So, let's let's start from from the ground up. What we what do we actually want from the concurrency? It's pretty simple. We just do many things uh, concurrently, uh, and uh, we want to do that uh, to easily offload tasks uh, to many computational devices, like, uh, for example, modern multi-core CPUs. Uh, once, uh, once the task which we scheduled uh, is finished, we want to get notified. Uh, we want to share the state safely so that uh, once uh, we decided that some uh, some state uh, is accessible to multiple concurrent uh, executors, so we want to make sure that uh, they will not mutate it uh, in, in an expected way. And uh, we want to avoid uh, the typical uh, concurrent uh, programming mistakes, such as uh, race conditions and deadlocks. Uh, so, uh, and we want to do that, of course, in the context of, uh, of the Kotlin programming language. So, as you, as you may know, uh, Kotlin as a programming language, unlike particular flavor of Kotlin, for example, Kotlin JVM or Kotlin JS uh, or Kotlin Native, uh, uh, it doesn't have uh, default concurrency primitives. It may change, but, uh, but currently it's, uh, it's like that. So it means that on a Kotlin JVM, uh, we use uh, JVM concurrency primitives, uh, threads, uh, uh, mutual exclu exclusion primitives and uh, uh, such as synchronized blocks, uh, uh, events, and so on. On uh, Kotlin.js, the uh, situation is uh, simpler because uh, there is no shared uh, uh, heap uh, between uh, different uh, uh, workers. Uh, there is not, <laughs> this is not, not much of a problem at all. Uh, it's uh, pretty common knowledge that uh, as threads, as uh, concurrency primitives, uh, uh, somewhat clumsy and error prone. Uh, but uh, but we still do want concurrency we, uh, because because we have uh, multiple machines, we have uh, GPUs, uh, we have other form of uh, of uh, concurrent uh, concurrent execution. And as in Kotlin Native, unlike uh, uh, other flavors of Kotlin, uh, uh, we control the runtime, which means uh, uh, we can have uh, way uh, better flexibility. And we can try to do the concurrency story better. So what is the actual problem with, uh, with concurrency on, on a JVM? The problem actually came from, from the very uh, Complex data structure, uh, memory manager, and uh, and the runtime operates on. So if you have uh, multiple threads accessing the shared object heap, uh, it uh, it actually uh, uh, need need to change and uh, and access pretty complicated object graph, which can also which can also change uh, arbitrary. Uh, so. Uh, it, me it means that once uh, when you implement a JVM, and I used, used to be a JVM developer for, uh, for several years in my life, so I'm <laughs> kind of familiar with the, with the complexity of implementation of this, of this runtime. Uh, and if you, if, if you want, if you want to uh, provide the contract which, is, which exists in, uh, uh, in JVM, where you have uh, uh, multiple mutating threads uh, uh, seeing this absolutely same object heap, uh, then, then you need uh, 
to perform pretty pretty complicated memory management. For example, when you're talking a uh, uh, garbage collection. Uh, for for example. Uh, if uh, if you perform a tra tracing garbage collector, which uh, uh, which finds which objects are reachable and all other objects are not reachable and garbage and can be collected, uh, uh, then you need to perform uh, certain phases. Our uh, first phase is, uh, is typically the root marking, which is finding all objects which are guaranteed to be uh, uh, to be reachable, and this is a typically data on the thread stacks. And to do this operation consistently, you need to, you need to stop all, all the exec executing threads. So stop, stop the world. Uh, then you need to perform a reachability analysis, which is, which is essentially visit every, uh, every object uh, in, in your object heap and, uh, uh, and mark uh, which, which object you have seen. And, and usually you, uh, you need to stop the world and at that moment, uh, all you need to perform a uh, pretty, pretty complex uh, uh, concurrency uh, garbage collector algorithms, such as concurrent park and sweep or, or garbage first in, uh, in, in a JVM. Uh, it also means that once you need to perform an operation which, uh, which actually blocks execution of every thread, uh, it means you need to be able to, to stop threads uh, at uh, random moments, and it means the, that uh, calling into the, into the C libraries uh, uh, need, need to perform uh, certain checks. So it, it, also, it also makes uh, calling into the C vault uh, more complicated. Uh, and uh, generally, uh, the typical algorithm used in modern uh, uh, GVM is a tracing collector because, uh, because the reference counting uh, uh, algorithm, which, uh, which accounts for every object, uh, the number of incoming references, uh, is uh, pretty hard to use on, on the shared heap uh, because uh, uh, there is no way to collect the cyclical structure and uh, so you need to, to update the reference counter atomically. Otherwise, it will, it will be in incorrect state for object sh uh, shared objects. And uh, after all that, which is, <laughs> which is uh, mostly complexities for, for JVM runtime developers, uh, uh, the programmers who actually live in, in a JVM world, uh, they can make a concurrency errors, and runtime doesn't help. So uh, you, you can make, make a race condition uh, easily. You, you can make it, uh, there are certain mechanisms to help with deadlock once, once it happened, but before it, uh, it actually happened, <laughs> you, you not even know that, uh, that your pro program potentially uh, can, have a, can have a deadlock. So all those problems uh, come from object sharing or reusing of, uh, of the same object from uh, multiple threads. But uh, what, uh, what kind of uh, objects are problematic for, uh, for, uh, for what I described above? Uh, immutable objects, uh, or objects which, uh, whose state is not changing in, in any way, uh, actually can be shared uh, pretty, uh, pretty reliably. There is, there is no, no way uh, uh, for them to introduce uh, race conditions uh, uh, or similar uh, concurrent, uh, concurrent mistake. Uh, so immutable objects can, can be shared. It's, it's, okay, it's okay from a programmer standpoint. But uh, for mutable objects, uh, the situation is um, a bit trickier. Uh, uh, if, uh, if you want a concurrent access, you either need to have a lock or you can have a, uh, an object reference uh, working, working as a lock. So if, uh, if you have object reference to a certain object, then you can, you can change it. Otherwise, you cannot. So if you, if you have, a, have a reference, you have a lock. Uh, and uh, this approach uh, is uh, generally more reliable because uh, uh, with uh, this, uh, this approach, you, could, you just cannot make, make a typical programming, mis um, programming mi mistakes uh, because you cannot concurrently update the same da data. And it also simplifies uh, implementation uh, of the memory manager, which is important for, <laughs> for us. So we implemented this, this whole thing in the context of, uh, of Kotlin Native. 
and quick recap of what Kotlin Native is. It's uh, an alternative backend for uh, for Kotlin uh, for Kotlin frontend, which uh, which takes the same uh, same input language, same same Kotlin, uh, Kotlin language, and translate it uh, uh, to the self-contained machine code. So it's like it's fully self-contained. It's uh, like a program compiled from C. Uh, there is no need to have any form of a virtual machine of. Uh, uh, of library, uh, whatever. It just it just fully 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 self-contained. Mm, it uh, it works uh, for uh, multiple platform. Um, most important one we believe are iOS, uh, macOS, Linux, uh, uh, Windows, and even WebAssembly targets. Uh, it provides uh, automated memory management, uh, and moreover, it provides uh, automated memory management with a contract similar to uh, what exists in uh, JVM when, uh, uh, when, auto, uh, when cyclic garbage uh, or uh, object which uh, refers to itself, for example, uh, can be automated, uh, automatically removed by the memory manager once uh, it's no longer needed. And it also provides uh, full automated uh, interoperability functionality with C, Objective C, and Swift, so that uh, you can call uh, uh, C programs uh, from uh, from Kotlin, Objective C programs, uh, Swift, Swift APIs, uh, and and uh, in opposite directions, so so that uh, uh, you can call uh, Kotlin programs from those languages as well. So it's a bidirectional uh, interoperability. And it also provides out-of-the-box uh, access to, to the platform APIs, uh, it depending on a particular pl platform, so that uh, when compiled to Linux, for example, uh, or macOS, uh, POSIX APIs are available on Apple Platform Foundation, AppKit, and similar APIs are available on Windows. Win32 is available. So it's like, uh, uh, it's like a JDK in, uh, in Kotlin JVM world. Uh, you, ass you assume you can always uh, call JVM methods. It's the same, same here, but uh, instead of JVM, it's, uh, it's a native API available on the platform. Uh, so what is uh, Kotlin Native Memory Manager? Uh, I'm uh, d describing the memory manager in a, in a concurrency talk because actually memory management is one of the tasks which need to be Perform concurrently <laughs> by the by the runtime. So, uh, so in a sense, uh, uh, many patterns seen in the memory manager also seen in uh, uh, in real <laughs> programs, in, in in user programs. Let's say uh, we, we implemented simple local reference co uh, counter-based algorithm. So it's uh, it's not a tracing GC. Uh, which means it has a lo nice local property, so you don't you don't need to analyze the whole object graph. Instead, you can just uh, just see that uh, the particular object is no longer referred, and uh, uh, you can you, you can dispose it whenever it's no longer needed. Uh, it also provides a cycle collector based on the uh, based on the trial deletion. So it's a, it's a well-known algorithm of uh, uh, finding. Uh, uh, of finding subgraphs which which are not uh, which has no incoming uh, edges, let's say. Mm. We separated storage container uh, from the objects. Uh, late, later on, I will just, I will explain why. And we introduced multiple uh, storage containers: uh, a normal storage container, concurrent uh, container, uh, permanent, and arena. So. Uh, they they different in a sense that sorry <laughs> uh, they different in a sense that uh, uh, no, normal one are updated with a simple simple increment and decrement on a reference counter uh, concurrent uh, uh, same but with atomic operations uh, uh, permanent are uh, allocated on uh, in a moment when program is being compiled not when it was run so so it's it's absolutely an object which which are always there. And arena are objects whose uh, land, uh, objects whose lifetime actually bound to a particular uh, stack frame. Uh, this uh, this allows us to implement uh, things like like escape analysis in the in memory manager. Uh, we do not implement uh, object moving, uh, very typical for uh, 
uh, for JVM because uh, uh, we believe that uh, mm, it, uh, it it introduces uh, uh, global uh, global pauses, which we try to avoid uh, uh, at, at all costs. So, as we consider Kotlin Kotlin native be an application level language, what we want to avoid we want to provide. Uh, uh, nice user experience. And part of the typ typical problem with user experience on Java programs is actually uh, GC pauses, pauses which are imposed by memory manager and which cannot be avoided. So what we, uh, what we requested in, in, this, uh, in the design of, of memory manager in Kotlin native was, uh, was a behavior where uh, intensive allocation or deallocation uh, on a particular thread, uh, a thread only affects that particular thread, not, not other threads. Uh, and it, it, partic it means that we, we cannot uh, liberally compact heaps, at least yet. And also we uh, implement uh, uh, inter interoperability with Objective-C uh, runtime. Uh, on the ref reference, reference counter level, so that uh, uh, f uh, for every object uh, in, uh, in Kotl uh, of Kotlin which, which is used in Objective-C or, or vice versa, so we, uh, we ensure that uh, object never go away until it's no longer used in both runtimes. Um, and as, as I mentioned, we try to avoid cross-thread uh, uh, interactions on the, on the memory uh, on the memory manager, so that uh, if uh, uh, if you have heavily allocating thread, it means it only affects that uh, uh, that thread behavior. It doesn't affect, uh, uh, for example, UI thread behavior. We believe this and that this feature is important for for UI applications. So as a, sorry. Uh, so as, as, I, as I mentioned, uh, an important uh, invariant we, uh, which we, uh, or important runtime property which we use in a Kotlin concurrency model is uh, immutability. But uh, immutability is not actually part of, of the type system uh, of the Kotlin programming languages. So, uh, so, so there is no const keyword, for example. Uh, <laughs> there is a const keyword, but uh, it's not uh, has, has uh, functionality available in C compiler, for for example. Uh, so, what we wanted to do, as uh, uh, this uh, this was pretty pretty bold change in a concurrency model, so we want to uh, we want to start. Uh, uh, Experimenting only on a runtime runtime level, not uh, not affecting language initially, uh, is a, is a runtime property. So we want immutability to be to be the runtime property, not uh, not the compile time property. Uh, actually, the same uh, evolution happened with uh, uh, with nullability. In, in Java, nullability is pure. Uh, well, at least in original Java, uh, nullability is purely a runtime property, and it's not uh, uh, controlled by by the compiler. But uh, in a Kotlin, for example, one of its uh, well-known benefits is the um, ability to um, provide uh, 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 compiler help uh, on nullability analysis. So we hope that uh, we can uh, uh, perform the similar uh, evolutionary path with immutability as well. But we start with the runtime property. Uh, uh, important uh, thing to understand that immutability is contiguous. So it uh, propagates to the transitive closure of all objects uh, reachable from the given one. So if, 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 you, if you guarantee that uh, certain object uh, is not mutable, it means uh, whatever it refers to is also not mutable. And immutability is one-way operation, so that uh, uh, if you proclaim something is immutable and can be cons uh, uh, consecutively shared between multiple uh, threads or workers, uh, uh, you cannot uh, eventually revoke this property and say, OK, I, <laughs> I don't want this, uh, uh, this be immutable anymore. I want to, to mutate it. So we implemented uh, uh, Kotlin native uh, specific extension function called freeze, uh, which uh, uh, perform exactly this operation. So 
we mark all objects which are reachable from the given one uh, as, uh, with a certain uh, runtime property or runtime bit uh, uh, and uh, proclaim they, they are no longer mutable. Once uh, one subject uh, is marked as, uh, as immutable, any mutating operation, uh, operation on that uh, will throw a runtime exception. So, so this object is, uh, uh, is no longer something uh, we can change. Uh, for uh, complex object graphs, uh, uh, we perform uh, aggregation of, uh, uh, of those object graphs in, into, into direct acyclic form uh, uh, so that uh, uh, these, uh, uh, those cont containers, uh, all those uh, object graphs can, can be freed uh, without uh, uh, complex uh, reachability analysis. It's a, it's a well-known well theorem in computer science that uh, any, any object graph can be, uh, can be condensed into, in, into direct acyclic graph of its strongly connected components. So that's exactly what, what, we, do, what we do here when, when we perform the freezing operation. Uh, as I mentioned, on a mutation attempt, a runtime exception is thrown. Uh, and once object is in a frozen state, it can be shared uh, absolutely safely between workers or threads, so, so that uh, you can do anything uh, with, uh, with such an object. And uh, for some uh, classes uh, whose API are uh, naturally immutable, for, for, example, uh, for example, strings or, uh, or boxes of primitive values, uh, we mark them as uh, Frozen because because they they technically immutable. You cannot change the content of uh, of the string in either uh, Java or in, uh, in in Kotlin JVM. You just uh, you're just immutable by by the on an API level. So that we provide uh, provide this feature. And for some uh, carefully designed classes, for example, atomic int. Uh, uh, we, pro we provide a safe, uh, concurrency safe uh, muta mutation operation. For example, if you have uh, an atomic counter, you, ca you can change its value, but, uh, but only through, uh, not, not through regular modification of, uh, of the Kotlin field, but through uh, concurrency safe operation. So this picture tries to explain how how object uh, graph condensation happens when, when you have a complex, uh, uh, complex object graphs, uh, so that uh, you see you, you, have, uh, you have object forming uh, strongly connected components uh, in the center, and uh, what you do, you, you decrement all uh, internal references and only uh, account for, for external references. And, and thus, when, uh, when it's uh, no longer needed by someone outside, in the outside world, it can be just uh, freed as a whole. So, sharing. Uh, frozen objects uh, can be safely shared, it's, it's clearly. Uh, uh, what, what we do with the, with the global variables, which, which, I, which I describe a little bit later, uh, for example, singleton objects, uh, companion objects, and enumerations, we freeze them uh, automatically after, after creation. And they're also available uh, from, uh, uh, from any worker. Uh, for top level uh, variables, uh, the behavior can be controlled with, uh, with annotation, uh, with a special annotation, uh, shared immutable. So if, uh, if you mark certain top level variable as a shared immutable, it's, uh, it's also frozen after creation and can, could be accessed uh, from any other thread. But, uh, but default behavior is uh, the top, top level variables uh, of uh, object types, uh, so, so not, not integer, for example. Uh, can be only accessed from, from the main thread only. Uh, and you can also mark a certain top-level variable as a thread local so that it will be immutable but, uh, uh, but local for, uh, for the particular thread. And the changes in one thread will not be seen in another one. Uh, so how, how do we uh, uh, perform a concurrent operation in Kotlin Native? 
uh, we uh, introduced the concept of workers because we want to avoid uh, the connotation coming with threads. So we call, uh, we call the concurrency primitives workers. They, they somewhat follow the actor model, um, which is probably known to many people in, in this room. Uh, so uh, workers uh, can share only immutable objects and mutable objects uh, are uh, always own, owned by the single execution context. Shall it be the main thread or, or certain worker? Uh, every worker got a job queue so that uh, you can schedule a uh, certain operation to be executed on a certain worker. Uh, and the main thread doesn't have a job queue, but uh, usually you can schedule operation there if it's in the UI application through, through the UI queue. And usually to actually use uh, the concurrency mechanisms of uh, uh, operating system, we build it on top of uh, operating system threads so that, so that you could actually use multiple cores, for example. Uh, but sometimes uh, in concurrent programs, we need to, to pass data between, between workers. Uh, so, 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 what, so what could we do about it? Uh, we can keep all the invariants which, uh, which I described earlier if along with the object itself we pass the ownership of the object. So that uh, uh, we say that, okay, I don't want to access this object anymore, I guarantee that, and uh, here you go. You can, you can, you can now access uh, uh, the, uh, this uh, object and, uh, and use this uh, the ex exclusively. Uh, also, we cannot just pass the object itself, of course, because, uh, because we need to pass whatever it refers to. Uh, once again, otherwise the ch changes in a related object still, still could, uh, could break the behavior of the program. Uh, fortunately, in a reference uh, counter runtime, we could easily check that, uh, that certain uh, set of objects or object subgraph uh, uh, has no incoming references, uh, uh, and uh, we uh, and we can we can actually pass it uh, uh, to to another object. So, so this is an API which which allows to do that. It's uh, uh, worker execute. Mm. This is a not very trivial function, but uh, you see, it it essentially uh, takes. Uh, uh, Producer lambda, which uh, which produces the value of certain type, uh, and uh, takes job, which which takes this input and uh, and results in the future. And uh, transfer mode controls how how we analyze uh, the reachability of uh, uh, of the object. Uh, so uh, the possible values are safe and unsafe. Uh, in safe mode, we we perform uh, analysis on the graph that it's no. Uh, it doesn't have incoming edges, and in unsafe mode, we, we don't do this, uh, this analysis and uh, trust to uh, programmers that they, everything is correct. Uh, producer creates object graph, which, which is to be passed to another worker. And a job is, uh, uh, is an operation which is being executed uh, in, in a worker context and, uh, and uh, computes the value. And we return a future which, uh, which could be checked uh, if it's already there, and, uh, 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 and we can consume the, the result of, of, this, of this computation. So, little example. Uh, in, in this example, we, uh, we factorize uh, uh, random, uh, um, several, several random numbers uh, uh, on, uh, for example, on four-core machine. So we start uh, uh, four workers, and we create uh, 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 first we create a random, uh, an array of four integer, uh, and then pass each each integer to its own worker, and worker performs uh, uh, factorization uh, into the into the prime numbers and returns uh, uh, the pair of original value passed and. Uh, uh, and, and all sor sorted factors. Um, and uh, and we, st we, start, we start computation, and once, uh, once it's ready, we, uh, we, we print uh, factorization. 
And you see, we, uh, here we can use, uh, uh, we can use mul multiple cores on a machine, and uh, uh, we, can, we can absolutely, absolutely safely perform this, uh, this particular operation. Uh, another example, which is uh, uh, typical for the concurrent programming uh, ping pong example, where we, uh, we create a certain, uh, uh, certain mutable data and uh, ping pong it between, uh, between worker and, and, uh, and the main thread of worker, wherever this, uh, um, this function is called. So we, uh, so we instantiate an object. Uh, and pass it uh, to the worker. In the worker, we increment it and return it back. Uh, <laughs> then we, uh, we get the value we obtained, we increment it again and, return, and pass it to worker again. So, so you see, this is a typical, typical ping pong primitive. As you see, this, uh, this operation allows to like, sa safely share mutable state, in a sense, because, because the object on which we operate uh, is mutable, it has var int, and, uh, and this int can actually be incremented, and uh, um, it, it always has a single, uh, mm, a single owner at the moment, uh, and this, this owner perform a mutating operation, and once, once it, it's finished, uh, it, uh, it, it returns uh, the ownership to, to someone else. <laughs> so as a result, you see this uh, uh, program prints like 42, 43, 44, and 45. Uh, by the way, you can try all those examples in, uh, in publicly available uh, general brain, brain tools like uh, uh, Idea Community Edition uh, with, uh, uh, with 1.3 YAP uh, plugin. So you can just, uh, uh, just copy, copy this code and uh, that's how I wrote, I wrote it, after all. <laughs> mm. So you see this. Uh, originally, the objects, bo both objects are attached to the main thread. Then after, uh, um, after the first uh, execute operation, we, uh, we attach the, uh, the object to, uh, uh, to worker object, he, he, but uh, the main thread has no longer access to that. And in the next step, uh, it, it repeats, uh, it returns to the main thread, and so on. So you see, the, the ownership is uh, like, uh, passed back and forth. Uh, so why, why we performed uh, this instead of, uh, instead of classical locking? Mm. I see many uh, frequently objects are related to each other, and uh, making locking right uh, can be uh, and be not, not very, very trivial and not very composable. And, uh, uh, and, and so, so the absolutely, provably <laughs> correct way to do that is, uh, is to pass uh, the object subgraph, which refers to each other uh, as a whole. And we also provided a, a data structure called detached detached object graph, uh, which, uh, which can encapsulate the arbitrary uh, uh, object subgraph, which, uh, which is not currently attached to any particular uh, thread of worker, and, and so can be, can be passed uh, liberally. Uh, this object itself is a Kotlin frozen object, so, so it, can, it, it can be freely accessed from, uh, from any thread of worker at the moment. Uh, and uh, this... Uh, this allows us to be fully concurrent safe because, because once, once we, uh, we have an invariant of uh, object uh, subgraph being uh, uh, only owned by, by a single uh, mutator or changer, uh, we, can, uh, we can guarantee that uh, it's, there is no, no way possible for, for the rate condition. So what do we do f we, for the global variables? Uh, uh, there are following classes of, of the global variables. Uh, singleton objects and enumerations, which we cover with, uh, uh, with pre-freezing top-level variables, uh, and all they are usually a source of implicit state sharing, which we also want to avoid. Uh, so as I mentioned, we freeze the uh, singleton and enumerations after creation, and. Uh, uh, make uh, top level only accessible from the main thread. 
there are certain important cases where this paradigm uh, is, uh, uh, look, looks like not non-functional. Most common one is, uh, is shared cache. So, uh, so when, when you, ha you have a cache which, uh, which to be shared between, uh, between multiple, uh, multiple executors and, and you want to uh, add or remove, remove elements uh, uh, from it. But uh, fortunately, with the concept of atomic reference, uh, uh, we can just uh, create an array of atomic references or, or, or a certain wrapper around it and, uh, and put, uh, uh, put values uh, to frozen objects, as I show in, in this example, uh, without much problems. So you see, here we, we, start, uh, uh, we start 10 workers, and they, at random, try to fill uh, uh, shared object here, and uh, uh, if, if they uh, and it's guaranteed that every element of the object heap is only only filled once. And so uh, another, it, it, this approach works works best for uh, uh, immutable values. For mutable values uh, uh, in cache element, uh, uh, we can use detached object graphs as as elements of uh, uh, of, of simil similar cache. Another common uh, sharing uh, uh, pattern is uh, job queue, and here we suggest to use uh, uh, worker's own queue to, for scheduling a job on a particular worker. And uh, yet another pattern is global constant or configuration. And here we suggest to use a singleton object uh, which is uh, immutable after creation or uh, market with shared immutable. Uh, concurrency and interoperability. Uh, we we in, inter, interop uh, with C, objective C world uh, very uh, strongly. So, uh, but part of interoperability is ability to use uh, concurrent APIs. And concurrent APIs on, uh, in those languages are either threads uh, or, or queues, for, for example, for iOS platform. So we try to play nice with those. And uh, fortunately, we can do if we, if we use uh, uh, early mentioned detached object graph, we can pass them as, uh, uh, as like typical void star callback, callback argument. And we can also pass uh, uh, so-called stable reference, with, which is essentially uh, a pointer to an object with incremented reference counter. So it's guaranteed to never go away. And uh, we can also pin an object. Uh, uh, and so, so it's data. Pinning is essentially uh, uh, fix, fixing objects, object state and guaranteeing that it's not uh, uh, Mm, it, it's, it's not going to go away un until it's explicitly unpinned. And uh, we can pass the object uh, uh, pointer to object interior to the C APIs. So the conclusions. Uh, we provide uh, uh, runtime mutability control with, uh, with the freeze operation. We try to enforce the good practice of immutable singleton objects and top-level variables, which uh, uh, <laughs> we even sometimes manage to find uh, mistakes in our own runtime implementation once, once we implemented uh, <laughs> this freeze operation. So, uh, so there are very unexpected uh, sources of state sharing and poten potential races, uh, as, <laughs> um, as experience shown. Uh, we provide safe concurrency mechanisms such as work workers, uh, detachable object graph, and atomics. And we can interoperate uh, with, uh, with external languages and, and runtime using those uh, concurrency safe primitives. And so as a result, uh, you, in Kotlin natives uh, allows to write uh, safe uh, concurrent code, code, code which, which guaranteed if it, if it compiles a run, then it's guaranteed that it, it never encounters any form of a deadlock or race condition. So that's about it. Any questions? OK, so you showed us a cache of immutable data. But what about a cache of mutable data? Meaning a cache where I can put objects, query objects, mute, 
for a time being, get their ownership, mutate them. Uh, How about it? Yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's a good question. And uh, as I mentioned, the uh, detached object graph is itself an, uh, it's an immutable object in the, sen in the sense of mutability model of uh, uh, Kotlin native runtime, but at the same time, can, it can encapsulate references to, uh, to arbitrary uh, object subgraph. So as a result, it's detached, and it's an element of the heap, uh, of the cache. So what you can do, you can, uh, you can grab it from the heap, reattach it, and, and use it. And, uh, and, and that's it. It's, uh, uh, you just, it just no longer be visible to anyone else while you mutate it. But you can then put it back in, in your mutated state. Hello. Uh, thank you for, for the talk. So I wanted to ask um, how this concurrency model can be transported to Kotlin uh, multi-platform, for example, or Kotlin JVM, because Andre mentioned that. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's an interesting question we're thinking uh, about ourselves uh, because uh, there are se several possible solutions. One is essentially that once, once you debug uh, and, and run the common code uh, uh, in, uh, in Kotlin Native and it's known to, to work uh, in Kotlin Native, then you automatically get the same properties uh, on, uh, on the JVM, although without, uh, without runtime support. But, uh, but still, you get, uh, uh, you get the same properties. And another uh, possible mechanism are uh, either runtime modifications, which are not very likely, or, co or compiler-supported uh, uh, checks, which, which is more likely. Uh, what will happen if uh, one thread will uh, try to keep reference to frozen object which will be passed to worker and uh, access it? Will up crash? Will uh, there exception? If it's frozen, it's, it's fully allowed. It's not a problem. If it's non-frozen, you mean? Yeah, probably. If non-frozen, then uh, whenever you try to pass the ownership, uh, uh, as, as I mentioned, the analysis happens, which, which, which I described, which checks if, uh, if there are incoming, no incoming nodes uh, on uh, incoming edges uh, to that object graph. And if there are, you'll get a runtime exception in, in, into, the, uh, in, into the place where you try to, per to perform this pass. Thank you. So I have two questions. The first one, is it possible that the, within an interrupt that the maybe a C code corrupts the object? That's the first question. The second question, um, during the interrupt, is it possible that um, the C code takes full ownership of this object so it doesn't transfer the ownership back to the Kotlin native code? Uh, OK, uh, let me <laughs> answer the, the first question. Um, first answer to your first question is yes, of course. Moreover, uh, uh, a C program can, uh, uh, can corrupt the state uh, always. It's like uh, it's, it's a property of the C code. If you, if you call GNI function from, uh, uh, from your Java code, for example, it, it gets the same property. It can absolutely liberally corrupt any, uh, any virtual machine state. It's just a, uh, just a feature of, of big shared uh, uh, memory space. So, uh, so this property doesn't really change between uh, Kotlin Native and Kotlin JVM, for example. And the second, if you, if you don't return the ownership back, then it likely means that uh, at the end of execution uh, from the C, uh, at the end of execution, uh, uh, you'll get, uh, mm, get, get a warning on exit of your runtime that uh, uh, certain uh, objects are leaked. And, uh, uh, you'll know about it, essentially. You'll get a message. Is it possible for two workers to exchange data during their execution? Because you can feed data to a worker before its execution and you get its result, but is it possible to exchange data during execution, like, for example, with uh, Kotlinx channels? Mm. 
it's, it's not exactly the channel model, but uh, generally you can uh, exchange the data, of course, because it's, uh, uh, Walker essentially has its own uh, request queue. It's an actor. And, and uh, any, as any actor, it, get, it, it can get back. Uh, oh, in, inside, inside execution block. Uh, no. Not, 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 not at the model uh, which we implement currently, although, uh, as I mentioned, on a structure similar to the shared cache, you can, you can implement this mechanism, but it's not, uh, uh, it's not part of the standardly provided uh, APIs. So I'm afraid we run out of time. <laughs>